If your diet always gets derailed because your cravings always seem to get the best of you, then you're gonna love this video. I'm gonna show you my top proven tips on how to stick to your diet so you can finally get rid of all your stubborn fat that's been living rent-free in your body all this time. You can finally kick them out. Tip number one you have to plan for your weaknesses. You have to know them intimately so they don't catch you by surprise. Because the reality is they're not all that surprising. I mean, we're creatures of habits after all. Once you know where you fail, like where you decide to go off track and what triggers it, that specific moment where you decide that you had a bad or stressful day, and you know because you did it last time, and then the time before, and then the time before that, that you always go for your secret stash of cookies or whatever your caloric kryptonite is, or those three extra glasses of wine or margarita because it's Friday, or you're binge watching a new show on Netflix, and you accidentally crushed a family-sized bag of Doritos to yourself, whatever it is, it's predictable. So instead, you plan for it, you intervene, you put a new plan in place, and you execute. But please, don't be fooled by your own human nature. Don't be surprised by it. Like Richard Feynman famously said, you must not fool yourself and you are the easiest person to fool. A lot of people complain that, oh, it was just this one bad night. They had a long day and they accidentally ate a tub of Ben and Jerry's to themselves. There's no surprise there. You knew that was gonna happen. Like, surprise, surprise, no surprise. You know that's your default pattern. My point is, you gotta know where you fail. You can't plan on sticking to your diet and achieving a successful weight loss transformation if you don't know where you suck. Like, be intellectually honest with yourself. You need to know exactly where it's gonna happen. Again, we're creatures of habits. We're so predictable by nature. And those weaknesses will exist whether you decide to pay attention to them or not. They're always there. They're just lurking on the background. They're insidious, so you might as well make friends with them instead of letting them run your life. Once you do that comes my next tip. Have an optional treat meal. This might sound intuitive, but hear me out. There is a world of difference between consciously making a decision to have a treat, especially if you plan for it like you're celebrating something big or you're going to a baby shower, which I'm going to tomorrow, versus being a slave to your weakness and just crushing a tub of ice cream or a bottle of wine to yourself because you had a long day. It's all about being mindful of your decisions. Once you accomplish tip number one, once a week, as an option, have a treat. But very important, that treat needs to be of the highest quality. Like don't waste it on pop, five cent candy, cheap wine, or fast food. Treat yourself. Like have some decadent New York style cheesecake. Go to a nice Italian restaurant and have some wine and or pasta where the ingredients directly come from Italy or whatever. Like for example, whenever I go to my parents' house and my mom makes her world-class flan or cheesecake, I'm not gonna say no to it. You can bet that she only makes it with the best ingredients because she knows me too well. Now, I'm only going off of personal experience here and the results of my coaching clients, but I've found that diet adherence increases drastically. If you allow someone to have the flexibility to have one meal or even a couple of meals per week to have a treat, but you have to limit it to just one or two. You can't have a full weekend binge and expect to stay on track with your weight loss goals. And ideally, you're having it either Friday or Saturday. So you can use Sunday as a day to kind of have a reset. Come Monday morning, you're back on track. And the math here is pretty simple. Let's say you eat three square meals a day following a proper baseline diet. And that's key, by the way, you need to follow the right diet. But if you're compliant with 21 out of 23 meals, that gives you a 92% adherence rate. I would take that to the bank. Like even if those two meals puts you on a calorie surplus for the day, as long as those calories are coming from mostly whole foods, you're gonna be okay. It's not the end of the world. Your body is just gonna increase your metabolism because your body knows what to do with those calories. That's why quality is king at the end of the day. And I tend to side more with this optional treat meal approach because the more you tell someone they can't have it, like never again, the more they want it. That's just human nature. That's why I like going the other way on this. You can have it, just not all the time. Is this process gonna be a little bit slower when it comes to getting results? Maybe, but the results are gonna be so much more permanent. It's also been shown that being on a calorie deficit for too long can be detrimental long-term because your body will eventually adapt and slow down your metabolism. That's why people hit weight loss plateaus all the time when they're dieting. 
to keep losing weight, you have to cut even more calories. You don't wanna do that. You don't wanna subsist on just a thousand calories a day. So think of your optional weekly treat meal as a mini reverse diet to keep your metabolism humming along. And then once every eight weeks, you should do a proper reverse diet and just eat at maintenance calories for the entire week. But the key for this optional treat meal strategy is my next tip. As you can see so far, they're all connected. You need to have a proper baseline diet incorporating foods you enjoy eating. Here's the truth when it comes to dieting. All diets work for about six months when they're strictly adhered to as long as it puts you on a calorie deficit. All of them. But here's the separator. If you're not following the proper diet, you eventually put all the weight back on after six months because your body has a natural set weight. And in some cases, you end up putting back even more weight than what you originally started with. And recent diet studies have proven that. Also, very important, you need to enjoy the foods you're eating whenever you go on a specific diet. Like you shouldn't unnecessarily delete certain food groups or eat in a way that you don't enjoy. Like life is too short. There are so many whole food options to choose from. If you don't enjoy what you're eating, you're not gonna stick to your diet, guaranteed. So if you wanna maintain your weight loss after six months and keep losing weight, you need to follow a proper baseline diet structure. What does that look like? Here are some key points. Avoid industrial seed oils, AKA vegetable oils like the plague. They're basically in all refined and ultra processed foods, as well as all deep fried or pan fried restaurant food. Don't drink liquid calories and severely limit your alcohol intake. Don't eat refined carbs and refined sugar like chips, candy, pop, granola bar, cereal, and the likes. Don't eat fake food and don't use artificial sweeteners. All the franken foods I just mentioned cause a nutritive mismatch in your body. Your brain then gets confused, which then triggers insatiable cravings. Lastly, get adequate and high quality protein and eat the least toxic plants that your body tolerates. If you construct your diet around those principles, there is no limit to how much stubborn fat you're gonna lose. And if you want a more detailed breakdown on how to properly construct a baseline diet suited for you, then make sure to download the Lean Body Blueprint at the top right hand corner here or in the description below. But having a proper baseline diet comprised of foods you enjoy eating is key for you to unlock that optional treat meal every week. And that's why I rarely eat out these days. I rarely feel like I have to treat myself because I enjoy my diet so much because I know I'm only eating the highest quality foods. Like I only eat out whenever I'm on a date or whenever I go to parties. Even then, I'm extremely picky with what I put in my mouth. This again goes back to planning for your weaknesses. You'll never see me eat out for brunch, for example, because I can make myself pancakes made out of sprouted grains. Sometimes I'll use almond or coconut flour. And then I sprinkle my pancakes with crushed pieces of 85% dark chocolate, some sliced banana, and then I drizzle it with raw and organic honey. I also have pastured eggs and high quality bacon at home. I have yet to find a brunch restaurant that serves the top-notch ingredients I just mentioned. Plus, a typical brunch meal at a restaurant is ridiculously overpriced. Next up, get adequate and quality sleep. I probably should have started this video with this, but your diet success begins and ends with your sleep. If you don't get this part right, you're gonna need divine intervention to stick to your diet. I'm not a magician because sleep is more important than diet and exercise combined. If you wanna be a healthy and happy human being, you need to protect your sleep at all costs. Like no sunrise is so beautiful that it's worth waking me up to see it. You wanna get at least seven hours of quality sleep in a cool pitch black room every night. And that's the bare minimum, which means you wanna give yourself at least eight hours of sleep allowance. I also recently started wearing blue light blocking glasses at night and it's been a complete game changer but study after study show that lack of sleep is directly tied to having a lack of willpower. People who are sleep deprived tend to eat as much as 400 to 500 calories more the next day. And trust me, those people are not eating 500 calories of cauliflower. Sleep deprivation also affects important fat loss hormones like a 15% decrease in leptin, which is the hormone that signals to your body that you're full. It also increases ghrelin by 15%, which is your hunger hormone. That's a 30% swing right there in the wrong direction. No wonder you have zero willpower when you're sleep deprived. 
Sleep deprivation also affects the stress hormone cortisol and the soaring hormone insulin. I mean, those hormones only control your body weight, otherwise they're not a big deal. Basically, not getting adequate and quality sleep moves every health metric in the wrong direction. You're going against your physiology and your physiology will always win. Long story short, you're just a hot mess with the worst cravings when you're sleep deprived, but you already know that. Next up, be mindful of what goes in your shopping cart. Listen, if it's in your shopping cart when you're buying groceries, it's as good as having it in your body. Your environment and what you surround yourself determines how successful you are with diet adherence. The good thing is you have complete agency when it comes to the food that you stock at home, especially if you're the one buying groceries if you have a family. If you live with a partner, communicate with that person what you're trying to achieve. I really only have one rule when it comes to what goes in your fridge or pantry. Never stock those highly refined and low quality franken foods I mentioned earlier. The chances of you not sticking to your diet goes up astronomically if those foods are always within arm's reach. Again, plan for your weaknesses. For example, fancy gourmet cookies are my kryptonite. So if I see it at home, I will go full cookie monster on it. The solution, I don't stock them at home. Plus, because I enjoy my diet so much and I eat fruit and raw and organic honey every day, I don't really feel deprived. Now I can have my fancy gourmet cookie as an optional weekly treat. And in case you didn't know, fructose found in a food matrix like raw and organic honey and fruit is not the same as high fructose corn syrup found in Coke and M&Ms. If that's news to you, well, now you know. That's why I eat fruit and raw and organic honey every day and not gourmet cookies. So do yourself a favor right now. If you have these franken foods in your fridge or pantry, toss them out. Like don't feel guilty wasting your money. Your health is absolutely worth it. If you want a treat, go out of the house and get a single serving. No leftovers. Again, if it makes it to your house, it's as good as being in your stomach. And here's a very underrated tip. Oftentimes, the fact that people have to leave their house to get the treat is usually enough to deter them from having it to begin with. And hey, if you end up getting the treat, not a big deal. We're just putting a barrier between you and your desire to get that treat because there will be enough times where you're gonna say no and you're just not gonna end up getting it. For me, if I'm at home and I'm just checked out and if it involves me putting pants on, it ain't happening. Next up, very important, don't just rely on the scale for progress. There's that popular saying out there, right? That what gets measured gets managed. For example, 85% of successful dieters weigh themselves regularly and track their calories. Now, one of the biggest reasons people give up on their diet is because they feel like they're not making any progress, when in reality, they are. But they end up quitting because they have no tangible way of quantifying progress. They're just guessing. Personally, I've been weighing myself every day since I started caring about my body composition. I do it without fail at the same time every morning after going to the bathroom and then I write it down on a whiteboard. That way, it's easy to see where I'm at with my numbers. It almost becomes your personal accountability coach. And if you're just starting out, I highly recommend taking weekly progress pictures and measurements. This is something I get all my private coaching clients to do because the scale doesn't always tell the full story when it comes to your progress. Depending when you weigh yourself during the day, the scale could go up or down by as much as four pounds. Plus, muscle takes up a third less space than fat because it's more dense. So if you're losing body fat while building lean muscle at the same time, the scale might not show a big difference, that's fine. But if you compare your progress picture from a month ago and compare your measurements, you're gonna see that you're actually leaning out and you're losing inches off your body. I mean, here's one of my coaching clients. There's only about a four pound difference between each picture, but the picture on the right is way leaner than the picture on the left. One of my other recent coaching clients only lost seven pounds, but she wasn't a tall person to begin with, but she also dropped a full pan size and she also lost five inches throughout her body. She's well on her way to getting that tight and toned look. So at that point, who cares what the scale says? She was able to achieve that by planning for her weaknesses, scheduling an optional treat meal or two every week while following a proper baseline diet. She was actually a chronic under eater when she started. So we focused on increasing her calories while focusing on food quality. 
as a byproduct, she started losing fat. Imagine eating more food and actually losing weight. This almost makes too much sense, right? Just remember that compliance is the science. The most successful people are the ones that are most consistent and are the most compliant. The best diet is the one you can adhere to as long as it's constructed from a proper baseline human diet. It's as simple as that. Now, if you enjoyed this video and want to keep doing a deep dive because there's so much more to learn, then you're going to love this one. I'll see you there.